presentation. Uh, Mr. Grau is feeling under the weather this evening. He'll not be here. Uh, here's hoping to speed your recovery. Uh, continue roll call, please. Dr. Cordelino? Here. Mr. Daughtry? Here. Mrs. Fano? Here. Dr. Modrak? Here. Mr. O'Brien? Here. Mr. Rappaport? Here. Ms. Zuckerman? Here. Mr. Palma? Here. Mr. Grau? Mr. Arena? Mr. Rzeski? Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is Slump, the Sunshine Law, please. The New Jersey Open Public Meeting Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advanced notice of and to attend meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the Act, the Montville Township Board of Education provided a public notice of this meeting, which included the time, date, and location that was posted at the Montville Township Municipal Building, all Montville Public Schools, the Montville Public Library, the Montville Township Board of Education Administrative Office Building, the district website, and advertised in the Daily Record, the board's official newspaper, on February 5th, 2022. Okay, these good representatives. Uh, Phil, it looks like you're the show tonight. Fire away. Um, so to get into some athletics, boys basketball finished up their regular season with a record of 12 to 11. Uh, tonight, the team with Daniel Arena will face more skills in the first round of the state playoffs and will we'll look to keep their season alive. The girls basketball team wrapped up their season sporting a record of 14 to 10. They will look to keep their season um, going tonight at the base primus in the first round of the playoffs as well. The wrestling season is over, but individuals from the team found their way into great finishes in the District 7 tournament. Carl Monaco, Anthony Medi, Justin Siliata, Mo Gator, and Aaron Kurzer won their respective weight classes. Aaron Kurzer made it through to Atlantic City at the Region 2 tournament and will compete for the top spot in the state. The winner track and field team competed in the NJSIA sectional championships. The meet consisted of many personal records and great efforts by everyone. A special congratulation goes out to Alex Palo for his second place finish in the boys 1600 qualifying for group championships. On to news at the high school. Schools were closed for President's Day on February 21st. Ticket sales are still going on for our annual spring musical. Opening on March 3rd at 7.30 p.m., the MTHS Theater Company will bring us their performance of Greece. Performances will continue on March 4th and March 5th at 7.30 p.m., as well as on March 6th at 2 p.m. We are excited to see what our amazing drama club has to offer. Looking into March, FBLA members competing at the state level are preparing for their trip to Atlantic City from March 9th to March 11th. Also on March 10th, the counseling office will be hosting a college fair for all sophomores and juniors. Okay. Any questions or comments for Philip? I was like to those of the audience who have never seen high school musical at this high school, I strongly encourage Greece. This high school drama department always puts on a fantastic show. As far as the other, when you see it almost any public high school, they do a great job and really looking forward to it. Uh, Dr. Rothkar, superintendent's report. Okay, um, just a few comments. I apologize for losing my voice. Um, did, uh, I did send out a communication yesterday regarding mass being optional in school and on the buses uh, beginning March 7th. Uh, I know several parents have reached out with regard to uh, quarantine for close contact. I have consulted with the Buffalo Township Health Officer, um, and the determination was made to continue to follow the guidance of the New Jersey Department of Health as we have throughout the pandemic. Um, our number of COVID cases in our schools have been extremely low uh, over the past several weeks, and also um, that's mirroring what is going on in, in the township as well. So we do believe that there will not be uh, very many students that would find themselves in the position of having to quarantine. Um, we, uh, I did indicate to the health official that we will take a look at uh, that policy again uh, in several weeks once we have entered spring. You know, we're having a little bit of warmer weather and we've had an opportunity for our students to be uh, mask optional in the buildings. A small number of districts have indicated throughout the state that they will no longer be requiring quarantine. Um, I 
believe that most of those decisions, um, at least some of them, were not made in consultation with the local health official. Some of them are uh, working based off the guidance from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. That guidance was, uh, has not been updated since January. And while it does encourage um, districts to step away from uh, close uh, contact or cl quarantining from close contact, um, their uh, parameters also uh, presume that uh, full masking is in place. And obviously, as of March 7th, that will not be the case here and in many other districts uh, around the state. Um, we do continue to monitor and reevaluate our operating plan on a monthly basis, or more often, if we feel the need to do that, or if something changes that requires us to uh, update the plan. And again, we will certainly continue to do that, and I remain in contact with Monthly Township Health Official. Um, that concludes my remarks. Thank you. Uh, if you look at our agenda, there is good news on progress in the schools, as there always is. I encourage anybody who's interested to read the agenda. We always have some, and this week is no exception. Uh, business administrator report. This is slow. No report. Oh, um, okay. Committee reports. My uh, facilities, Karen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Palma. Uh, the Finance and Facilities Committee met right before this meeting. Uh, Mrs. Funt is preparing the budget and in sections, and the committee uh, is uh, continues to go through those sections, and we will have a couple more meetings before the budget is presented. Okay. Uh, curriculum instruction. They will be meeting later this month. Policy, Michael. We haven't met him. Communications, Michelle? No report today. Safety and security, Mark? No report. Ad hoc committees, a delicate liaison, NJSBA, Karen. Uh, thank you again. Uh, on Saturday, uh, I chaired the Legislative Committee of New Jersey School Boards. Um, so to give you an update on some recent uh, laws that have been enacted, signed by Governor Murphy, there's a package of bills that address mental health. Uh, one bill addresses mental health partnerships, creates grant programs to encourage a school districts to partner with, with, to partner with institutions of higher education. There's also a youth services program grant, um, a wellness grant, mental health data reporting will become required. A few of the other bills have to do, or laws at this point, student journalist rights, school security drills, regionalization, which, re, which uh, provides grants to study the possibility of consolidating school districts that would be voluntary. Uh, the AAPI instruction, Asian American Heritage Commission, uh, addressing CTE, uh, career and technical teacher shortages, and, and the uh, possibility of hiring retired staff. Uh, just to let you know what's going on at the Senate Education Committee level, it has a new chair, Senator Vindal Powell, who was a guest speaker at Saturday's meeting. And some of the things that passed through his committee are a school funding formula evaluation task force, a bill on remote instruction during uh, days where the school needs to close for either weather or other related reasons. Um, there's a hope that uh, we can get a bill passed that would repeal the residency requirement for teachers and school employees. Um, and today, uh, I attended the executive committee meeting of New Jersey School Boards. And I'm happy to report that for the 13th consecutive year, the dues for New Jersey school boards will remain flat. Uh, workshop is continues to be planned as an in-person event. Registration will open on April 1st. I would suggest we all register. Um, it's a one-time fee. It includes all of us or as many people as we want to bring along, including our administrators.
administrators, and um, <clears throat> if you've never attended an in-person workshop as a school board member, it's certainly worth uh, the effort. Uh, as we all know, the governor will deliver his budget address on March 8th, and because that's a little bit later than usual, the Department of Education is allowing school districts to extend the schedule uh, for submission of their budgets. Uh, so that will help a little bit. And the last item is on February 28th, New Jersey School Board's uh, Association and Sustainable New Jersey will release the comprehensive report with dozens of recommendations on how New Jersey schools can incorporate K-12 climate change education throughout the curriculum. And the guidance in the report will serve as a key resource for the school community to successfully navigate the learning standards adopted in June 2020, adopted in June 2020 that made New Jersey the first state to incorporate K-12 climate change education across content areas. I'm sorry for the length of that report. There was a lot of activity at New Jersey School Board so since our last meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Very nice report. Uh, Morris County School Board, Mike. No report. Morris County Educational Services, Jeff. Uh, we have a meeting next week. Drug Awareness, that's me, meeting next week. Uh, delicate Liaisons, Mount Athletic Boosters, Mike. Uh, I'll meet tomorrow night. PTC Liaisons, Cedar Hill, Karen. Uh, no report, but we are meeting, I think, on the 16th of March. Uh, Mr. Grass not here for Hilldale. Um, Valerie, Jeff? I uh, didn't meet in two weeks. Lady Mason, Christine? No report. Board about that's me. We have a meeting last week in the one I don't remember the exact date and I apologize. Um, Lazar, David, or Mike? Yes, uh, next week is March 21. High school, Michael and Michelle? Um, they met last week. Unfortunately, we were not able to attend because we were conducting superintendent interviews. But um, they really appreciate all the updates from the uh, various academic areas, from uh, Mr. Sanford, and um, you know, the PTC is moving forward with um, helping with all the earth activities. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, this time we're going to do our first public participation. This is for matters on the agenda only. If you have a question or comment you need to make about something off the agenda, please wait until the second public participation session. Is there any public participation for items on the agenda only at this time? Seeing none, um, I'd like to make a motion for the, do I have a motion to move the agenda in? So moved. Second? Second. Roll call. Before you do the roll call, I just want to um, again remind the board that we are removing item L33. Mr. O'Brien? Aye. Ms. Eckerman? Yes. Dr. Cordelina? Yes. Mr. Daughtry? Yes. Ms. Hispano? Yes. Dr. Modrak? Yes. Mr. Rappaport? Yes. Mr. Palm? Yes. I should probably shift down for some questions here. I'll just go through now. Section I, any questions? J, K, L, I did this in reverse, I'm sorry. L with the um, deletion. M, N, O, policy. To um, close session. Um, any public participation partners not on the agenda? Hi, my name is Heather Roosh, 19 Maple Island, Pine Brook. Uh, before I begin what I'm going to say, I just 
for any preconceived notions about me, I am a registered nurse who's worked in full pandemic. I have two daughters in the school district who have both have IEPs for speech therapy. So just so you don't think I'm like a rat or something, okay? Um, in light of the recent update on mask optional, I have a few concerns regarding the continuation of quarantine. I believe that parents need to be given their rights back to make health decisions and decisions in general for their children. Quarantine has provided nothing but a negative impact, not only on my children, but other children as well, physically, mentally, emotionally, and socially. If you and whoever the deciding bodies are, need more input from the community of children and adults who were elected and hired to represent, I implore you to initiate in the very least a survey to the community to understand the people you represent and their opinions and thoughts on the subject. Currently, 11 confirmed school districts and county have already confirmed implementing quarantine optional. From a close contact quarantine research paper, individual and classroom quarantines have been implemented with insufficient evidence for the role in minimizing COVID-19 transmission and insufficient considerations of the harm to children. Research has proven that any decision to switch to online writing for the majority, even for short periods, carries social, educational, and mental health risks for children and their families. The impact of remote learning, however, is particularly severe for the most vulnerable and marginalized children. Children with special educational needs or who are already disadvantaged are at increased risk of harm. Moreover, for some children, education is their only way out of poverty for others School offers a safe haven away from the dangerous or chaotic homework. Learning loss, reduced social interaction, isolation, reduced physical activity, increased mental health problems, and potential for increased abuse, exploitation, and neglect have all been associated with school closures and school quarantine policies. Three medical groups, including the American Academy of Pediatrics, recently declared a national state of emergency in children's mental health and schools across the country say that they see an uptick in disruptive, disruptive behaviors. There is no substitute for face-to-face -face learning. In the absence of strong evidence for the benefits of classroom and individual student quarantines, the precautionary principle would be to keep classrooms open and kids in school to prevent catastrophic harms to children. Our kids are not the virus and I feel society is continuing to treat them as the source of it. Allow our kids to be kids and return to normal. Make all things masked and quarantine alike to be optional and optional only. No stipulations, period. Children and adults should never be discriminated against or segregated based on masking preference, quarantine preference, or vaccination status. Those who are not vaccinated, like my four-year-old daughter, because she can't be, may not be able to because of age, medical conditions, etc. We need to learn from the mistakes of history and teach our children we will learn from the past and not make the same mistakes again. Discrimination and segregation should not be tolerated, period. We, the community, request more choice regarding COVID protocol. Through transparency, collaboration, and communication, I hope to hear a resolution to this issue soon. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> and by the way, I neglected to read um, before the comment. I should have said that a portion of the meeting is provided to allow members of the public to make statements or comments that the board and the administration will not be engaging in a dialogue at the conclusion of the public comment, the board president, that's me, Walter the superintendent, the opportunity to comment or respond on any matter of concerns. Having said that, please feel free to speak. Good evening. Uh, my name is Debbie Ock. I am a former school administrator um, and a teacher, and I am a Montreal resident. Um, I've lived here for 38 years. Uh, in fact, two of my daughters graduated from the school system. Um, but first, um, I'd like to wish Dr. Robitar much success in your retirement. Um, I just retired as well. Um, in light of the fact that masks are optional as of March 7th, um, I just would like to confirm that the prior COVID mitigation strategies will remain in place. Um, such as social distancing within the classroom, um, encouraging the vaccination and boosters within the school district, and continuing with the contact tracing and testing. Um, also, um, 
recommending that the vaccination and booster rate of students and staff, if possible, be made public to the community. Um, and I think that's it. Thank you very much. Let's get back to what worked our entire lives. 
If you're sick, stay home, and if you're healthy, go to school. Any other? Let's go back a little. Any old business? General board comments, new business? Seeing none. Motion to adjourn. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Good night, everyone.